again reporting to the cloud on tonight. Uh, Sister Janita, I will be making you a co-host in case I miss somebody coming in, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Pastor Ryan, you want to pray us in? Mm -hmm. By his dear Heavenly Father, come before you right now, saying, Thank you, Lord, for letting us live to see another day that was not promised. Lord, we thank you for this gathering. Lord, we ask that you come in this service on tonight, Lord. Open our hearts up and our understanding, Lord, that we might receive your word down in our heart, Lord, and that we might not only be hearers of the word, but Lord, make us better doers of the word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Friday night live tonight. We, uh, our topic on tonight is following Jesus and what does it mean? Following Jesus and what does it mean? Our root scriptures will be coming from tonight are Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30 and Luke 9 and 23. Sister Janita, you wanna get those and read them for us? Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Sure. Um, we have Matthew 9 and 23. We're going to go with that one first because my... Wait, that's Luke. Luke, 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 Luke 9. 9 and 23. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Luke 9 and 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That was Luke 9 and 23. Our second set of scriptures, scriptures come from Matthew 11 and 28. And they read, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light following Jesus and what does it mean? Uh, Bishop, you got anything you want to start out with or? Well, we will just, we'll, we are looking for everyone that wants to, to contribute. And uh, we reiterate that we are a Bible study. We look into the meat of God's word. So, you know, we, we're looking for more and we always can receive what we already had. The scripture said, uh, was the Hebrews two and one? Uh, well, scripture just left just that quick. Uh, somebody get that and read it. <laughs> just, we just being false Hebrews today. two and one. He, Hebrews two and one. We ought to give the more earnestly to the things we've already heard. Let's at any time we let them slip. So we want the church. We all we all should be striving to grow in the Lord. And how do you grow in the Lord? We grow in the knowledge of God. This is how we grow. We grow both by our study and by our experience with God. And this is what causes us to grow in God. So we seek to grow more and grow closer to the Lord. The more you know, the more you can grow. And so we are thankful for everyone. You can, whoever wants to start out, uh, I'll, as usual, take mine last if we get to it and uh, look for everybody's to contribute that want to. Okay. Uh, following Jesus and what does it mean? Um, I, okay, I, I'll go first. Get in and out the way. Um, seeing that in, Discip in Discipleship 101, a lot of what we are learning is the life of Jesus. We are walking through the steps of Christ's life, which is teaching us um, how to follow Jesus, what it is we should be doing um, in order to, to follow Christ. So following Jesus and what does it mean? One of the things I thought about was Jesus had lots of followers. A lot of people follow Jesus, but not all believe. Not all were disciples of Christ either, but a lot of people follow him. So when we begin to talk about following Jesus and what does it mean? Are you a true follower of Jesus or are you just a follower? <clears throat> um, not everyone that was following Jesus loved him. And the same thing gonna be for us. Not everybody that follow you loves you either. Uh, John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, 
he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Romans 12, verse 2 through 3. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be reminded we are to love the Lord our God with all of our mind, right? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We should study the word of God to uh, so we can recognize false belief. How are you going to know what's true and what's not if you don't know the word of God? Study the word of God. We're talking about following Jesus and what does it mean? Um, study so you can you can recognize false religions and false gospels, even so you can recognize your own negative thoughts, what is truly you and what is not, and then call that stuff out. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to what and to who? The obedience of Christ. Study to show thyself approved that you can ensure you are, follow, you're, you are not following another Jesus. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul. Matthew 26 and 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We know that we are drawn away by our own lust and entice. Right? So we got to crucify this flesh. The spirit is willing. We love the Lord with all our soul. Right? But the flesh is weak. We have to crucify the flesh. We have to make a choice and who we are going to follow, right? Mm -hmm. So thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Galatians 5 and 22 through 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. The world was doomed. We needed a sacrifice. Scripture tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we know that that is love. And it also tells us in, in Hebrew 10, five through seven, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. Mm. Jesus became mm. the sacrifice in the flesh. That's love. We're talking about following Jesus and what does it mean? He became the sacrifice in the flesh. That's love. He died that we may live. That's what he did. Following Christ and what does it mean? And burn offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou had no pleasure. Then said I, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. I come to do thy will. Following Christ is what it looks like. This is what it looked like. Doing the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. what, what does following Christ look like? Accepting the will of God over your life. Walking in the purpose he has for you, not the purpose you have for yourself. Not the will that you have for yourself. Not the goals that you have set for yourself. Now, if them goals happen to line up with the goals that God has for you, awesome. But I'm here to tell you nine times out of 10, they don't. What you done plan don't line up with what the Lord has planned. But if you walk in his perfect will, your desires will soon become his. When you get rooted and grounded in Christ, 
when you begin to study the word of God and not only hear, but begin to live by it, you will begin to only desire what he desired for you. You go only want what he want for you. You won't have a taste or a desire for anything else. When you mm -hmm. taste of this water, when you drink of this water, when you drink from this well, you won't have another mm -hmm. thirst for nothing else. This following Christ and what does it mean? What it means is you, you walk in the purpose he has for you. And then when you begin to do these things, you will treat your neighbor as yourself. Amen. You will begin to exemplify the fruits of the spirit in your everyday life. Not just on Sunday or in front of certain people, but daily, you will want to show kindness. You will want to show gentleness. You will want to show love. You will look out for other people, not because, uh, not be just because somebody came and said they had a need, but you will go around looking to meet a need. Whose need can I meet? What can I do today? Right? When you are truly following Christ. And when people do come to you, you're looking for ways to fill the need that they have. Christ will be minding his own business and people will come. He healed them. He delivered them. He set them free. We're talking about following Christ and what does it mean? Following Christ is denying yourself. Taking up your cross and following him. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you no matter what it looked like. No matter what it sounds like, no matter who don't agree with what the Holy Spirit gave you, you better listen to the Spirit. That is what following Christ looks like. It looks like losing sometimes because people walk away. It looks like you ain't got. It looks like you ain't going to make it. That's what following Christ looks like. Right? What does it mean? We're talking about following Christ and what does it mean? It means sometimes I'm going to have to go without something. It means I just got to trust him no matter. What situation I find myself in, we're talking about following Christ. And what does it mean? It means dying to yourself. It means uh, counting up the cost, putting your hands to the plow and not looking back. Man, I, it was so much better when. Nah, we ain't looking back. It's better right now because I have everlasting life. This life is temporary. Whatever I was doing back then was temporary. It was going to pass away when this one passed away. What I have now, nothing can be. I got everlasting life in Christ Jesus. There's nothing greater than that. Taking your free will that you have to make the choice to follow Jesus. Taking your free will and being able to give it back to Christ when it don't line up with the word. Mm -hmm. Taking your free will and being able to give it back when it's not his will for you. I do have free will, but the will I'm about to do is not the will the Lord has for me. So guess what? Mm -hmm. I give my will back to you, Lord. I take your will. I choose your way. We're talking about following Jesus. Walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, mm -hmm. not for self. But by love, serve one another. Follow, uh, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's good. Is that all? That's it. Man. You're rolling pretty yeah. good. It, 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 it get cut off in the middle. Mm -hmm. well, Got to say something for somebody else. I'm all thinking about y'all. I ain't thinking about myself. <laughs> all right, now. That's so, that's, that's so beautiful because, you know, I was just let on the last things I wrote. So many, so many people have erred because the Lord led them to do something and it didn't agree with what somebody else said or somebody else felt like they should do. That's why the Bible said that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. With following Christ, you have to be careful that we don't be get off track by somebody else but that's beautiful uh next person yeah this this is this is beautiful pastor you want to go or i go oh you go oh, you go ahead yeah you go ahead okay um okay so i have um jesus 
Uh, what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it look like to follow Jesus? Um, understanding that Jesus is Lord of all, but yet he is serving to all through him bearing the sins of the world on the cross. In Romans 12 and 16, he said, be of the same mind one toward another, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. So look at the word condescend. It means to stoop or descend, to yield, submit, implying a relinquishment of rank or dignity of character and sometimes sink, sometimes sink into debasement. That means sometimes you're going to sink lower than what you actually are. Not being a person of having a specific title, but knowing that you are a servant of the most high is what's most important. Um, Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Um, verse 8, who being found in the fashion as man, he humbled himself, he condescended himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross wherefore god has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name um understand that we must submit all of our mind to the mind of thinking like jesus and not mm -hmm. think of ourselves more highly than we ought for our life this life that we have now is but a vapor um Jesus shows us this in John 13. Um, I'm, I admonish everybody to take time and read and study that, but I'm just going to jump around to the verses that really um, jumped out at me, which was John 13 and 3. Jesus, knowing, knowing that the Father had given him all things, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises up from, rises from supper and laid his aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded then come it Simon Peter and Peter said unto him Lord doest thou wash my feet and this is this is one of the very very good points for me that was really out Jesus answered and said unto him what I do thou knowest not now but thou shalt know thereafter. Um, Jesus even washed the feet, the feet of Judas, so Judas, the person who he knew was about to betray him, which tells us that being in the like mind of Jesus, we are going to have to serve the Judases in our life. We're not gonna, mm -hmm. we're not gonna let them know that we know that they're Judases, but we're gonna serve them just with the like mind of Christ being humble, knowing that they're gonna betray us, but still mm -hmm. humbling ourselves with the like mind of Christ to be able yeah. to serve them with the love of Christ, with love and kindness have I drawn them. Uh, we may not understand or know at the time that Christ is doing something in our life, but we have to trust by submitting ourselves wholeheartedly to his will being done, knowing that his will has to be done above and most of all. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things, all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose, not our purpose, as Sister April just um, brought out, not our purpose for our life, unto his purpose. In verse 8, it said, Peter said unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered mm -hmm. unto him, if, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. So if Jesus is telling us by the example of Peter, if you can't wash, if you have a title, if you are in an office and you can't be a servant, you can't be a part of Jesus. And Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he, he said, okay, well, Lord, if I can't be a part of you by you not washing my feet, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. We have to submit wholeheartedly, not thinking that we know more than what Christ knows. Just like the Zephyr said, we have to be, um, uh, be obedient to the knowledge of Christ. Um, and then I have uh, 13. He said, ye call me master and Lord. And ye say, well, for so I am. If I then be, if I then your Lord and master have washed your feet, ye ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done. Verily, verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. 
For if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not all, I speak not of, of you all. So that means everybody ain't gonna get it. But I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth the bread with me has lifted up his heel against, against me. So Jesus knew the person who was sitting right with you, the same person who you have as a prayer partner might be the one that's gonna give you up at Judas. The, the same person who sit next to your, you on the pew at church who has been faithful with you just might be that Judas in your life. And you have to treat him with the same love that Christ showed Judas. In 2 Timothy 2 and 19, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are healed. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So what iniquity is that? He said the second commandment is that you love your neighbor as yourself. So if you're not loving your neighbor, if you're not condescending to your neighbor as Jesus did, you are in iniquity. Um, Jesus knew what Judas was about to do and he still washed his feet. He didn't treat him differently. We have to always remember the plight of the enemy and remain in the posture and the hard mindset of doing the will of the father. Whatever he says for us to do, like this April said, we may not understand why he is saying, go tell his sister that Jesus loved her. We might not understand it. We might have to go give our enemy a hug. We may have to go give somebody that we know is backbiting and talking about us. We may have to bless them, but we have to be in the same like mind of Christ, being a follower of Jesus, imitating Jesus and be like him and do it with a good heart. Uh -oh. oh, excuse me. Um, In 20, he said, I think it's my last one. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomever I, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomever I send, so it don't matter who he's seeing, he, 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 he dwell on the dress as well as the unjust, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Today we have so many people that want to jump jump the uh the way the, the line of way it's supposed to go. No, we can only talk to God through Jesus. And if you do not receive Jesus and the words of Jesus and whoever Jesus sent, whomever they may be, it could be a wino, it could be a homeless person, it could be the very least person you think it could be your enemy. It could be your enemy. If he sent him and he sent him and, and, and you get closer to what Christ wants you to be, you have to receive whatever he say. Um, not just always believing that you're gonna also always just jump the toe. You're not gonna be able to jump from a sinner straight to God. We can only talk to God through Christ Jesus. And that is how we follow him by condescending to men of lower state, being a servant to all. That's all. The disciple is not above his master and the servant is not above his Lord. And so everything that Jesus did, commanded and endured, and this is so important when she was talking about uh, the betrayal, you know, uh, I had the experience that I never thought about that. You know, we think about Jesus, you know, they talked about him, they crucified him, but the betrayal is real. Mm -hmm. And an enemy don't betray you. An enemy yeah. can't betray you because you already know who they are. Jesus, mm -hmm. though, when, we, when we're betrayed, you betray, you betray by somebody that you thought someone that you saw as a brother, somebody you saw to be someone that loved you. Uh, David said, if it had been my enemy, I could have avoided it. So, you know, following Christ, he's our example in everything. Somebody else, I'm, I'm just kind of yeah. touching on something. But that was yeah, good. That was, uh, that was good. Yeah, that was uh, good. Uh, both your and Sister April, I mean, brought out valid, brought out valid uh, points in that. And uh, one of the things that stood out is when you uh, began to talk about uh, your enemy, someone... Uh, that you know don't really care for you, that don't know, uh, that don't really like you. And, you know, it's easier said than done. A lot of things that Jesus said uh, when he was uh, 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 addressing the disciples, oftentimes they don't agree with human nature. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't agree with, with, with what the world and what uh, the world teaches. And, you know, that's one of the things that Paul said in Romans, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, the scriptures say, let us put on the mind of Christ. 
See, and so we, you know, you you see so many different things, and one of the things uh, that everybody like to talk about since the beginning of time is that turning the other cheek. Man is still uh, trying to figure that one out, you know, uh, about the turning the other cheek, and, and 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 what Jesus was speaking to them. It wasn't natural for them to do, even when they were getting ready to take Jesus, when they was getting ready to arrest him. Uh, uh, you see that Peter then pulled out swords and everything. The disciples were ready to fight, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But Jesus had, if you remember back on what we call the Sermon on the Mount, that he said, turn the other cheek. The enemy smite thee on one. He said, give him the other. Everybody know this scripture, but don't nobody know how to, to perform it. The only way to perform that act is by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit. See, you're trying to interpret scripture without knowing who Christ is. So mm -hmm. it's not going to work. He said, behold, my words are spirit. They're life. It's more than just reading the words off the page. These words are actually living words. And mm -hmm. I think that's the point that everybody missed. You know, they had it saying, you know, I, I see it everywhere. Uh, try Jesus, but don't, don't try, try me because I throw these hands. Yeah. See, and that's about, the best, on, that's about the best the world could do. That's about Ooh. all they could do. They say that because Come it's on. not in your nature. You <laughs> see, and, and so the very that's fabric right. of what Christ, the very fabric of what Christ was saying, every man that don't have the spirit of Christ missed that mark every time. I don't expect nobody that that, that, that don't have the spirit of Christ to understand the words of Christ. So in following Christ, I have to become that example of how Jesus would act or how he would move if he was here. Am I saying that the flesh can't rise up and somebody strike you on one cheek and, and you turn around and strike them back? I'm, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but thank the Lord that we have an advocate. What John say, look, children, I write unto you that you're seeing not. But just in case we got an advocate through Christ, so my flesh get weak, I still got a, a way of escape. But, uh, Scriptures, uh, I believe it's uh, well, let me start at Isaiah 53rd chapter, uh, the 53rd chapter, and uh, I always this is always my point of reference when I get to really understanding the life of Christ because it was prophesied by Isaiah, you know, that he would be a suffering servant. The mm -hmm. Bible says in, in uh, Isaiah 53 and 3, it said that he was despised and rejected of me and that word despise me not like not mm -hmm. receive yeah. and, 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 and see and although i believe sister april see some people can smile in your face but mm -hmm. turn around and stab you in the back so he had a lot of people following him but just because they were following him doesn't mean that they necessarily liked him mm -hmm. and, and, I, and i think that could be said about a lot of us today a lot of people you have in your life on on, on your friend this this that, and the other everybody is not really with you. Mm -hmm. You see, and this is the dis distinction that, that comes along with having Christ. Say, Christ say, think not that I've come to call peace, but division, uh, to separate a father from his son, a mother from her daughter, so to speak. There was a type of division in Christ because everybody couldn't receive the words and the sayings of Christ. Mm -hmm. in, in the book of, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 7 and 23, 23 he said, you, you, you were bought with a price. Mm. Think about that for a minute. You're bought with mm -hmm. a price. Who paid that price? And what were you that you had to be bought? We were slaves. Come on, Not only were we slaves because we know who Israel is, but we were slaves to sin. In other words, so, so we had to be bought the slave master, the enemy. You know, So by right, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So we had to be purchased by Christ. How did Christ purchase us? By his blood. Okay, so what do we blood. do in return? We follow his example. He laid it out. I believe somebody said the servant is not greater than his master, but it is also good that the servant might be as his master. So in other words, you're not going to be above me, but mm -hmm. you're going to be equal with me. Before mm -hmm. Jesus got ready to go back to heaven, he said uh, uh, the servant don't know what the master does, but what the Lord does. But he said, you know what I do because I told you all things. So I, now I call you friends. I call you friends of mine. And see, and so we ought to give the most earnest heed, like you say, to the things that we have heard and by what we're hearing through the spirit. And Christ ought to be that example. And following Christ is sometimes, I believe it was said that your will is not going to line up all the time with what he would have you to do.
uh, ambition is not a part of Christ. Personal ambition, right. because how do yeah. I know that? Because he say, if any man come after me, let him deny him himself. Come himself. on. So personal ambition don't fit in that mold with Christ. Amen. It's a sacrificial life. And, and amen. I think that's all I got right now. But praise the Lord. God bless you. You know, he looked, he looked following Jesus right here, what, what you was talking about in Isaiah 53, and then also uh he looked weak. You know, Jesus he talked about he, he talked about turning the other cheek. Well, we know naturally. You turn the other cheek, that means you 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 ain't looking strong. You know, you, right. you looking, yeah, you scary, you weak, you scared, yeah. 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 You can't do yeah. nothing. Well, mm -hmm. here we have the Lord of all who created all things, turning his cheek to those that smit him. Uh 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 and so and I know that with the that's part of I believe why Judas betrayed him. Because we don't put all this faith in you, you know they they were they were looking for him to restore the kingdom back to Israel, mm -hmm. and, and, and they were looking for a physical, a civil Messiah, yeah. and you didn't raise the dead, and you didn't fought the disciples. Come and, and even the Pharisees, I believe, when he was on the cross, come down from the cross, and we'll believe you. Mm -hmm. And that that takes a great sacrifice to know that you can speak, you can just, you can do this, but but yet. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, because mm -hmm. this really what it what it means to follow Christ. And it's not just in suffering. It's in it's in victory. We're going to follow him. Paul says that, that I may mm -hmm. know him in the in the what he said, the fellow, the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his fellowship suffering. of his suffering. Mm -hmm. Fellowship. That means everything. Really, this is one of the things that I'm going to let somebody else go. Uh everything we that's why we studied the life of christ because everything that he encountered is subject to take place in your life mm -hmm. and every way he responded gives us an example of how you're supposed to respond that's it right, that's it. right. you know when they when they wouldn't receive him john and james said lord would you that we call fire down from heaven and because jesus said, you don't know what spirit you are it's not mm -hmm. a man didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save men's lives. So he became our example. And, we, and this is why these lessons are so important, because when we look at what, what, what I'm seeing presented today is not Christ. What I'm seeing is 100% the flesh. We've glorified mm -hmm. acting brutish. We've, we've glorified acting mean when the Bible even tells us that a bishop is not to be a striker, not a brawler. But we, we've glorified the acts of the flesh. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna speak to you. Well, that's because you done backslid. I ain't gonna speak to you because you done left my church. You're not following Jesus. Jesus never mm -hmm. did that. He, he left the mm -hmm. 99 and went to get the one sheep. See, this is this is why we must study his life. And like Sister Abel was saying, we have to make sure that we're following the right Jesus. See, the Jesus that people have been portrayed and people that people that people see, I know you ain't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I know you ain't studied the word. I know you ain't studied the life of Christ because the things that Jesus did and said, see, if you don't study the life of Christ, you don't know what Christ would do. You don't know That's this right. Jesus. Right. It's easy to talk about him going, and, and, and this is another area. He went to the temple. And what did he do? He overthrew the tables of the money changers, mm -hmm. the seats of them that sold doves. He beat the people. If we really had Christ today come in our churches today, we wouldn't acknowledge him. We wouldn't know who he was. We send the security to usher him out. That's right. Yep. yep. Because he said the zeal of 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 of, of, of the zeal. How, how did he put it? The zeal of my God had 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 warned me. The zeal of my the zeal that he had for the house of God. Uh, but now people say when you start talking about the word of God and talking about the in, the 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 the, the uh, deficiencies in the church, you ought not fight the church. Well, ain't nobody fighting the church. But if you got something wrong, then you that needs to be pointed out. He's coming back after glorious church without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. 
Mm-hmm. And so that means that we're going to have to follow. What would Jesus, we had that saying, what would Jesus do? What would mm-hmm. Jesus do? Like Brother Ryan said, the people mm-hmm. say, well, well, try Jesus, don't try me. Well, that means you ain't following Jesus. You Peter. Mm-hmm. You, you, Come on. Come on. You Peter. Come on. You, you Peter. Yep. Because somebody here. <laughs> You, uh, you, you, Thomas. You, you, Thomas. Thomas said when he got ready to go to Bethany, at least Thomas was dedicated. Thomas, he was down. He said, "Well, let's go that we may die with him." But I don't <laughs> think he meant dying, just laying down, die. We're gonna die fighting. Yeah, we're gonna die fighting. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, no. right. So, what right. does that... it really mean to follow Jesus? What does it yeah. really mean? Uh, uh, one scripture said, "We're counted as sheep for the slaughter." Wow. So, uh-huh. You know, you yep. what, what, won't you won't you stand up and do something? Won't you call on your God? Uh uh Come surely on. God ought to deliver you, but that's not that's not following Christ. Somebody else do it on. I, I, what is this is this is this is, I wanted to uh just to throw this in real quick, Sister Shirley, and, and then you can out the floor. <laughs> um having a conversation with someone the other day about what you just said, Pastor Moore, where people now, when you say something about the the posture of the church, they get upset. Like you're attacking the church. But what it reminded me of was Christ coming. Mm -hmm. And he came to who first? To his own. That's right. They received him not. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. then he went unto the Gentiles. It's Mm -hmm. the same thing happening right now. He's coming to correct his own, but you won't receive Mm -hmm. the correction. You won't turn from your wicked ways and turn back to him. So then what Mm -hmm. we're doing is going out and compelling men to come in because Mm -hmm. those in the house are not following Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. It's in love. What he's doing is showing his mercy and his grace. It's in love that he's saying, hey, this house is not in order. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it is. But instead, they're the, the body of Christ is being the Pharisees. We just not going to receive. We just don't believe mm-hmm. that's Christ. We just don't believe he say he is who he is. We don't mm-hmm. believe he sent you to give us that word. We don't believe. Mm-hmm. And, that's so, mm-hmm. and that's so true. That's so true because what you have today, really when you look at, and this would be something I would encourage everybody to do. Me and Pastor Chris talked about it. If you would just look at the life of Christ, just look at his life and look at the life and how and what the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes took him through. My pastor told me this years ago. He said, everybody is in the word of God. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you in the word of God, your spirit, your name may not be there, but, but your spirit is there. And when you look at the life of the Pharisees and how they followed Jesus, like you talk, so they were talking about, everybody followed him wasn't his disciple. Everybody that followed mm-hmm. him wasn't following him for a good reason. Sometimes they were following him to find, to catch him in something, to find mm-hmm. fault in him. But if you look at the, 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 the Jesus and you look at the Pharisees, it's not hard now. It wants you do that to discern yeah. who has what spirit. That's right. It's not hard to see who has Jesus' spirit. It's not hard to see who has the spirit of the Pharisees. And the spirit of the Pharisees, remember Brother Ryan was talking, is a religious spirit. That's right. You really have to look at it because it, it mm-hmm. mimics what is God. It has is a form of godliness. It's godliness. But yes. denying yes. the power thereof. Damn it's right. a form of like Christ. Mm-hmm. It, it, mm-hmm. it has all the right words. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, higher, you know. It, but when you look at what what was actually being presented, is not Christ; it's another Jesus. That's Second mm-hmm. Corinthians uh, four and with eleven and four. I eleven. Believe. Hold on, mm-hmm. sister. Sure. Um, I was yeah. coming from James. Um, as as Pastor Ryan and Sister April and you were talking, and I received James one twenty twenty one through twenty four. It says, "Wherefore laying apart all fit." filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receiving in with meekness the engraved word which is able to save your soul but be ye doers of the word and not hearers Mm -hmm. only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word uh, of of his of of he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for mm-hmm. he beholded himself and goeth his way 
and straightway forget it what manner of man he was as uh, that that's basically what 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 they're saying they they're going about it they they can hear the engraved word of god uh uh, but they they can't set aside the the fluidity of naughtiness the, the 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 flesh they can't it can't set aside that they can't actually receive and accept uh, what God is truly saying and mm -hmm. so they, they 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 go into thinking that hey I, they they have their own own way about it they can hear the word but not actually receive it and then mm -hmm. after they 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 they've said they received the word, but no, they just heard it and didn't become a doer of the word. You can hear all the word all day long. You can get mm. all the scriptures all day long, but if you're not receiving that and applying that to your life, it 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 is it, it, it's, it's dead works. It's, it's, it it don't work that way. You you haven't Amen. received. You're going back in the same way that you was in the same manner that you would that you heard the word is the same way you acted when you get back in, 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 at the house. God's word didn't actually uh, permeate or a, a, accept or come into you, and you applied mm -hmm. it to your life. When you was cut, you didn't you didn't actually hey to ask God forgive me Eve, for this sin. You found me in this word and. Instead of actually repenting of that thing, you just said, "Oh, you found me," and you went back to doing what you was doing, and it because it felt good to you and, and it was comfortable for you. You didn't de deny yourself and take your your cross and follow him um you know, daily because that's what he required of you. That that's a part of following him when he gave you the engraving word. Or uh, a part of you was supposed to act. That, that was supposed to accept. Hey, Lord, this is your will. Let me, let me, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, and that, that's the greatest thing of, 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 about it. That's all I got. Word come that you can see yourself. That, and mm -hmm. that's beautiful. What you, the word come. But see, this, this was the, this was the nature of the Pharisees and the nature of the Pharisees of the day. They so easy to see others' faults. And, and and the spirit word that come, I've even heard them talk about scripture, but not mm -hmm. recognize that what you're talking about applies to you. Yeah, you 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 spend so much time applying the word to other folk that, like Sister Shirley said, you ain't you forgot how you look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You trying to correct this brother on how his hair is is, is not is not comb and yours ain't comb. First, pull mm -hmm. the moat out of. Pull yeah, the beam out of your eye, then you can see how to pull the moat out of your brother's eye. Like somebody was saying, why do we why do we talk to the church? Because where's where judgment gonna first come? To the judgment house, gonna to the first house, come of, God. The house of God. And That's how right. can I go out and win the world when they're looking at the church? We need to clean it up and we need to make a distinction. That's what the life of Christ does, it makes a distinction. When I look at the life of Christ and I look at all of his life, it's not hard to distinguish between what is and what is not of Christ. Even you can have all the frills, Brother Ryan made, somebody talked about the pig. You can take him and you can clean him up and you can put a bow ribbon around him. He's still a pig. So when mm -hmm. I look at people today and I see all the good works and all the fine words, but but when I look at what Christ is, and he is our perfect example, then I see, oh no, this ain't Christ. Because uh -huh. it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it's the little foxes that destroy the yeah. vine. It's mm -hmm. the little things that you do, the unforgiveness, the respect of person, the hatred, the despising, mm -hmm. that show me that you're not of Christ. A little leaven, leaven it the whole lump. I ain't got to follow you all your life. I just be around you long, long enough to let you show me who you really follow. And somebody else go ahead and go, this, this is good. But but in Romans, yeah, I was on as you was talking, and it's Sister Shirley, but she brought out a whole lot of points. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. it was a whole lot. Yeah, uh, that really blessed me. Open a lot of uh, stuff up that beholding your uh, when the Bible when it talks about that glass, it's talking about mm -hmm. a mirror, what we call a mirror nowadays, looking at yourself in a mirror. But one of the things that uh, Paul was pointed out, and you know, Paul was a persecutor of the church. But he say he he but uh, he came in a ten chapter Romans. He said, "Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved." He say, "For they bear record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge of God." Right. You see, and this right, is many right. of your religious people on today. They raising their hands, praising God, 
but that's only a zeal. But he said they don't have knowledge of God because the only way to know God is through Christ. And see, and they had submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, which is Christ. And so, therefore, they uh, if you go up a couple of chapters, you say they stumbling. Christ, he's a rock uh -huh. of offense to many. This is uh -huh. why they don't like you following Christ. This is why you despise and you're not liked. When you have the real spirit of Christ, nine times out of ten, most people, even you're gonna have a lot of pretenders in your life that pretend they like you, and the old ones on the other side, they're just not gonna like you. That that religious set, they're not gonna like you. You know, you don't have the same spirit that they have. So there's going to be resentment. There's going to be, uh, hey, you know, uh, you know, keep away. You know, you're going to get that rejection. And see, and if you can't, if you don't understand rejection, if you don't, if you uh, got a problem with rejection, this is going to be a long, long way. It's going to take be a long uh, journey for you because yeah. understanding the life of Christ, he was despised and rejected, like I said a while ago. And so rejection is a part of the identity, identity of right. Christ, of being right. identified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. They stumble. They stumble. Many people stumble at Jesus. Like the fair, and when, when you run into those religious people, and, that, and, and, and I don't know a better way to put it, because a lot of folk, sad to say, a lot of folk have had Christ, and they backslid. Mm -hmm. they, they they started following somebody that. else other than Christ. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and Paul says that they beware, Colossians 2 and 8 said, beware lest any man spoil you. See, mm -hmm. so uh, after the, what he said, after the philosophy of man, the tradition of men, vain lies, uh, vain deceit, he said the rudiments of the world. And he says at the end of that verse, Colossians 2 and 8, and not after Christ. And, mm -hmm. and not after Christ. You can take your, when you take your eyes off Christ, it's not a matter of if you're going to get lost, it's a matter of when you will get lost. And so this is why Paul said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, but they stumble at Christ. Somebody else, boy, this is, this is heating up. Um, I just wanted to read that we, we keep hitting on it and talking about it. Second Timothy three and five through seven, having a form of godliness, but denying mm -hmm. the power thereof. From mm -hmm. such, turn away. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The Bible says turn away. So, you know, it, people kind of be up and down with, um, well, people just don't want to be in church and people leaving churches. It's not that people are leaving, it's that people's eyes have come open to the form of godliness mm -hmm. that is going mm -hmm. on in the building and they are turning away from such. That's uh -huh. what's happening. I see that there's no power here. There's just a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. uh, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse mm -hmm. lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And this is what we are seeing today. It's a form of godliness. People look like they're following Christ, but they are not. People are following self, following mm -hmm. flesh, following traditions, following religion, but are not following Christ. And, 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 what, and what's, what's, what's causing them to see? What's, what's causing people to see is the word. The word pulls the cover off everything. That's right. The word pulls the cover off to show you exactly what is what. That's what Jesus was doing when he when he when he talked to the Pharisee. He said, "Yeah, you, you appear as white as sepulchers, white on the outside, but inside you full of dead men's bones. Uh, you appear as uh, platters, uh, platters, but you clean. You you clean, first clean the platter, and then what? How, how did he put it? The outside of you appear the as clean. Yeah, first clean. You clean the outside, but clean the inside." See, and this is what this is what the word does. The word is purging. Jesus said in John 15 and 3, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Who was he talking to when he said that? His disciples. He wasn't talking to the world. He was talking to his disciples. There's got to be some cleaning up taking place. There has to be a renewing of spirit, the spirit of Christ and not the spirit of the world. Somebody else go on, go on. Uh, this scripture just to came me. to me too. Um, when the when the Pharisees came to Jesus saying, "Yo, disciples didn't wash their hands," 
And mm-hmm. he said it's not what goes into a man that defileth him, defile. but what comes out. Yeah. Did yeah. you know we were talking about this in, in, in Bible class? Uh 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 when when they said your disciples they they pluck corn and eat corn, which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. This is why it's so important to read the study the life of Christ, to do what he says, search the scripture, for they are they that testify me. Uh uh when they uh, approached Jesus about his disciples not obeying the law. What did Jesus do? Somebody tell me, what did he do? He justified his disciples not keeping the law because he said, did, have you not heard what David did? When they went into the, went into the temple and they ate the showbread. Ate the showbread so he, yeah. if we looked at that today and said that, oh, he, he didn't answer the question. He he didn't answer the question. He justifying what they and that's what the people look at us today. Oh, you justifying mm-hmm. sin as much as we talk about sin, as much as we preach about sin. Oh, oh you justifying sin. Ain't nobody justifying sin, but you blind. You can't see. And one scripture that came to me, I was thinking about that this morning. I think I told Brother Ryan, I was thinking about a particular person, and the scripture came to me, second, second Corinthians 4. And where he said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The reason you don't understand or you think that I'm I'm trying to okay sin is because I'm, the gospel is hid because you lost. Is it in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not? Then, then in second, what is second Timothy, uh, the second chapter, he talks about uh recovering the, yourself out of out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Who's he talking to? He was talking to believers. That's right. Hymenius and Philetus overthrew the faith of some. And it's sad to say it, but we got to say it. We're not following Jesus. Many people's faith in Christ has been overthrown, has been replaced mm-hmm. by faith in the church, faith in the pastor, Faith in this ministry, faith in the doctrine, the only gospel, the only doctrine sanctioned in the scriptures is the doctrine of Christ, the gospel of Christ. Where did we get all these other doctrines from? Mm -hmm. It was already Mm -hmm. in scripture. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. Paul dealt with it and he cut it out in his day and time when, when they tried to get it into, into the church. But somewhere along the line, as Jesus said, while men slept, the enemy tried that again and it, it, it got in the church. I'm Baptist, I'm uh-huh. holiness, I'm Catholic. I'm the only, are you a follower of Christ? Somebody else, go ahead. Somebody go ahead. Come on, Sister Janita, you got your hand up. Oh, yeah. Um, I was just sent to uh, Luke 5 and I guess that's 30 that we are to when we are being like Christ, we are to be without dissimulation. We are to be without hypocrisy in the church. We can't say that we love um, Christ and we don't do the things that Christ do and that he um, he ate with the sinners and the publicans. In Luke 5 and 30, he said, but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples. They were talking about his disciples, the people that actually followed Jesus, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered unto them, answered, Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So often we have people that's that that's that's really in the all they do is come to church to have a to have a show and they don't really want to go out into the highways into the byways to preach to those that are truly lost. If you are just coming to church every Sunday and you're not you're not calling nobody to be a disciple, then who are you? You're not being like Christ. He he didn't just go to church to hear a word. He called people unto repentance, and that's what we have to do mm-hmm. today, and not just be hypocrites as far as going into church just to have on our nice outfit or have on to see whoever's going to be at the church or whoever's going to whoever's going to be singing at the church and remember it that the church is is we are the church the place that you people. go and worship yeah. yeah the people um when Jesus said to the woman at the well he said you know not who you worship but the time mm-hmm. will come when you will uh, when you will worship him that the, the father seeketh those that will worship him in spirit and in truth he didn't say that will worship him in a building he said that will worship him in spirit 
and in truth. So if you're worshiping mm -hmm. him and in spirit and in truth, you have to have the Holy Spirit and you have to worship him in truth, mm -hmm. not lying and being deceptive of who you are and what you are in Christ because your fruit will show who you are at the end. Mm -hmm. Sister, Sister Shirley said something a while ago and she, she started talking about the mirror. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, why does the word keep finding you? If I, if, I, I, if we keep talking about something, why, why does the word keep offending you? That tells you there's something there. See, the word is the word is a two-edged sword. And, and when you got when the word makes you flinch, that means it doesn't found you. Why does it offend you? Jesus, he offended the Pharisees. Why? Because he was showing true love. He was showing the true side of he was showing God the Father. All they had was some letters. All they had was the law, and they wasn't following them. And they were offended by Christ because he was revealing the true God. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. So why is the word continually uh, finding you? Why are you offended at the word? You don't get offended at something unless it's something that touch a nerve. It's something that the word done found or it, done, it put, and, and instead of being offended, you need to say, well, maybe this is something I need to look at too. Maybe this is something I need yeah. to look deeper into. Why is this bothering me so? It ain't that it's the devil. All the, it, that, that's many times Come that's on. conviction. That's the spirit yeah. of God. That's Jesus speaking to you. He spoke to the seven churches of Asia. Before the end of all things in scripture, the book of Revelation, before the end of all things, what did he do? He spoke to the seven churches of age. And he wasn't just speaking encouragement. He spoke some encouragement, but the rest of them, he was try, striving to get them ready. I have a few things against you. Notwithstanding, I have a, you, have, you have a few things against you. I, you need to repent about this. Why? That was love. Somebody else go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Well, anybody uh, let me say this right quick. Well, look, I free to go ahead, sister free. Go ahead. You read it. Amen. Praise God. Following Christ. Um, to truly follow Christ means we have to become, he has to become everything to us. The Bible said in John 6 and 63, it is the spirit who gives life and flesh. And the flesh is no help at all. The, uh, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Following Jesus mean, means uh, striving to be like him. He always obeyed his father, and that's what we strive to do. Um, John 15 and 10 says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments, it, commandments and I abide in his love. To follow Jesus truly means to make Jesus Lord over our life. Romans 10, Romans 10 and 9 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many confess on today uh, Christ with their mouths, but their actions uh, truly is not lining up with it but the scripture says that if we're going to confess him with our mouth and and we believe that in our heart that we will be saved but we also um have to do the things that pertain it unto christ um mm -hmm. which he commanded of us to follow christ means that we learn his word and we and we live as if jesus walked beside us um in person each day um Many, you know, because he's not in the flesh, you know, and he's not just there. Uh, many, you know, tend to do their own thing, you know, oh, as long as within, you know, I confess it. And as long as within, you know, within my secret self, as if, as if he cannot, uh, he's the God of all things, you know, he know your thoughts, he know the intents of the heart, you know, so just because on the outside, we look like him and we dress like him and we confess things out of our mouth like him we think that we are deceiving um the world um but god knows and uh if your fruit is not lining up then we know as well um denial of self uh denial of self over obeying what god says in his word matthew 16 and 24 if anyone will come after me let him deny his deny himself 
uh, take up his cross and follow me. The Holy Spirit will bear fruit, uh, will bear his fruit in our lives. Galatians mm -hmm. 5 and 22, the Holy Spirit produces, um, I'm not going to read it, but I, I do have Galatians uh, 5, 20 through 22 through 26. The Holy Spirit produces character of Christ in us. Our goal is to be like Christ. If we follow him and our, our character will reflect his. Um, mm -hmm. I also have uh, Philippians 3, 7 through 8, and it reads, but what, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus in, in my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done that I may win Christ. Um, so even in this life, you know, as we deny ourselves and, and, and you know, we may uh, go without, you know, certain things, you know, that we may in the flesh feel like, okay, you know, Lord, why that ain't happen for me? You know, I feel like I deserve that, you know, um, you know, even when it comes to, you know, maybe companionship, you know, uh, for me, you know, um, marriage, you know, um, I believe, you know, that I, I, in my heart, I desire that, but is that what God truly have for me? Will that happen? You know, and even if it didn't, I'm here to follow Christ um, to the end. Denying yourself includes overcoming persistent fleshly demands of the body and bringing them into submission to the word of God. I don't Come care on. yourself, you know, I don't care what you desire for yourself, but is that what God wants for you? Um, does that line up with his will concerning you? Galatians 5 and 24, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh in, the pa in, in, in its passions and desires. You got to give up. You got to die to yourself. You got to give up your own self desires. You know, um, we can't go around here um, living any kind of way in Christ, treating people any kind of way in Christ. When I first came to God, um, my step, you know, I couldn't believe that, you know, people would, would treat you in such a way. People would shun you in such a way. People would take to even social media to slander you in such a way. But in the end, the Bible tells us that we still have to love. We still have to pray. We still have to treat them with love and kindness. If they needed you in such a way, you still uh, meet the need of that individual, even right. after, uh, mistreated. Um, so, um, and, and lastly, we must die to ourselves and, um, and, um, it, it, it's not all about us. It's not all about us. It's about Jesus and what he commanded of us, what he's commanding of us. Um, I command you today to choose to follow Jesus Christ and you won't regret it. Amen. 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 Anybody else? That was good. Amen. Because his Peter done stepped on me. His Peter, <laughs> yeah. She done stepped on me. Let me go and do mine. And she not really stepped a foot in it. So. <laughs> Which is a good thing. That's confirmation. Let's go back to Philippians 3 and verse 7. She, she, she already, she, I already got it rolled down uh -huh. since the previous old. So that's, that's a confirmation for me. Paul is following Jesus. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness or holiness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable or like unto him, unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, that's also being like Christ. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that's the purpose, mm -hmm. that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, 
I count not, sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those That's things amazing. which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be ye followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Mm. For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Following Jesus, following Jesus. Paul said, I press toward the mark, the mark. or the Ooh. prize of the high car. That's what we are. If anything, we ought to be pressing toward. It's not pressing for another car. It's not pressing for another home. Is not pressing as preachers for another building. It's not pressing for no, more members. We should be pressing toward the mark to be like Jesus and for the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. There are three callings. The call to repentance, the call to service, and then there's the call for reward. We all should be working for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, some some churches today are, are 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 so are ruled by men. They're not ruled by God or by the Word of of God, which is Jesus Christ. You can't say the Word of God without talking about Christ, because He is the Living Word. Hebrews what is that four and twelve? Uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of son of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest, it said, in his sight. Talking about Christ, for all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He's talking about Jesus. If we're going to follow the word, that means to follow him. When Paul told Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, he was telling him to preach Jesus, to preach Christ. To the Jews, it'll be a stumbling block. To the Gentiles, it'll be a, a rock of offense. But to us which believe Christ, the power of God, this is the stone that the builders rejected, both in his day, then, and today. The this is the stone that the builders are rejecting, trying to build a building, but without Christ. And if the Lord don't build the house, they labor in vain that building. If the Lord don't keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. All right, you could be a watchman, but if you ain't watching and keeping your eyes on Christ, then it's all in vain. Uh, we, we, we're we being taught by men. We're being taught the ways of men. We're being taught the philosophies of men. We're being taught the convictions of men. And I'm not going to say that all of that's wrong, but does it line up with Christ? Was the man you following following Christ? And sadly, many times we have to say he wasn't or they wasn't because I see respect the person. I see unforgiveness. And many other things that we know Jesus spoke against. Paul said, mark them that... Mark them which walk so as you have us. For an example, Paul followed Christ. They wasn't our free, free willing it. They were following Christ. When we read the, 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 the epistles of John, the epistles of Peter, we read the epistles of Paul, we can go back and pair it up with what Christ said. If what you're preaching, you can't pair it up with what Christ said said by the word of God right to divide it, you're not following Christ. You're following somebody else. And sadly, because of this, many, I, I believe, are going to stand before the Lord 
only to hear him say, depart from me. Lord, have not we prophesied in your name? Have not we done wonderful works in your name? Have not we cast out devils in your name? How can you do all of this? And then the Lord say, I never knew you because you weren't following me. You weren't following, we're not here to follow ourselves. John said, he must increase. I must decrease. The longer you walk with Christ, the more you should be shedding you mm -hmm. and taking on him. And if you've been walking with him for 50 years, my God, I ought to see nothing but Jesus in you. If you've been walking with him for one day, what is it? Be not conformed to the world. Many times we regarded the world as certain things. Mm -hmm. The world also is vengeance. The world also is unforgiveness. The world also is revenge. The world also is un. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's more, more than just these some of these temporal things, some of these small things, or some of these what we call great things. Mm. Do I see the love of God? Somebody was talking a while ago uh, about the love of God. The love of God is kind. The Bible said love is kind. It is. Mm -hmm. I can see love. If you treat me unkindly, you can't tell me you love me. Right. If we bite and devour one another, take heed that we be not, dis de what is it, consume one of another. Do I see Christ in you? Anybody can act like Christ on the outside. Do I see Christ in your heart, by your actions, by your daily life? Following Jesus. Amen. Can I say something? Go ahead. Amen. Well, that's my sister. That's my sister. Thank so, God for my sister. Hey, Go ahead. hey, everybody. It's good. Glad to be here. Just hearing all of these wonderful ministers. All of you all sound like just, you know, evangelists, just uh, telling the world about Christ, which is a wonderful thing. And also, I, I hear the fivefold ministry here because uh, anytime someone wants to make sure that it is Jesus and nobody else, that's a calling because many have turned from Jesus and did their own thing in the world. I, I, I wanted to kind of uh, play with my brother uh, to tell him, you know, when, when he was little and he was saying, hit me again, I didn't realize that was Jesus, the meekness, <laughs> the meekness in him, <laughs> the meekness in him, he, did, he didn't want to fight. You know, he, he, he wasn't ever going to handle himself. He was going to be meek and humble and kind and giving over to the Lord. I didn't know he was called at that time because I was mad. I wasn't following Jesus. I wanted to fight him and beat him up. <laughs> Everybody that know me, know, 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 know the family, know that little joke. But I was thinking about uh, ministers and, and my brother and sisters. Uh, I was thinking about when we say follow Jesus and I, my mind went to Jesus. You know, he's here right now. He's, he's mm -hmm. listening to what we say. And my mind went to him as we follow him. And we, when, we, when he told them, uh, you know, to come follow me and I'll make you fish as a man. And the, his character, I was thinking about Jesus, how, what he did, he did, he, he, he came from heaven, he was the most righteous, but he was touchable. And he came mm -hmm. to heal, mm -hmm. heal mm -hmm. the brokenhearted, to set the captive free. And so we said, we said, we said, if it's not Jesus, if we're not, if the world is not filling our heart for Jesus, by the things that we do, we are the light of the world. And if we're a city set on a hill, but we have, as my, as my brother said, no kindness, no touchability. Come on. Mm -hmm. yes. we, we're saying Jesus, we know Jesus, but is, is your hand touching the sick? Come on. Come on. Is, is your hand going to the to the to where there's there there are people, you know, we, we like to preach to each other, which is a good thing, but there's so mm. many people that are in need of the love of God. And they're not mm. and, and, and 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 you have to touch them. I mean, look at who was touching Jesus and coming to Jesus, lepers, unclean people, uh uh a horse, my God, horse. Come on. Whores were able to touch him, hallelujah, able to touch him, but who, who he is. So when we, we talk about Jesus, we have to be like him. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and I don't think, I don't think the scripture is so hard when, when we, when we, when we, as far as doctrine is concerned, because 
when I look at Jesus in the scripture, I'm drawn to him. Mm -hmm. I'm drawn to him because he's so loving. I mean, yeah, he, he's he's going to tell you the truth and 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 whom the father loved, he's chasing you. Yeah, he going to chase you, but you can tell him, "Lord, I, I got a problem." Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. I got a knee here. I, I I I I can't seem to forgive or I can't seem to shut my mouth or I can't seem whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Whether even even if it's sexual, we don't talk about it today. Because the moment we talk about real problems, people, you know, people get shamed because they know that most of the time in the church world, they shame you and mm -hmm. you, you can't come clean. But it's real. Jesus, yeah. if, if, but, if, but, if it, but if it is Jesus, I can come clean with him and say, mm. Father, forgive me, forgive me, yeah. forgive me. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the last thing I, I thought about uh, as I was hearing, my, my brother told me that what the scripture was going to be about. And I, and I went to, and I, I heard this in Matthew uh, it, 1, Matthew 18, rather. He said, in that hour, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to himself mm -hmm. and set him in the middle of them and said, most certainly, I tell you, unless you turn and become as little children, you will in no way enter the kingdom of God, even kingdom of heaven. Whoso therefore humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of, of heaven. Even though you got much power, the greatest power is one is meekness. It is a fruit of the spirit. And I pray God that I can I can have that meekness because uh, we become great when we, we humble ourselves before God. Amen. 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 God bless you. It's being yes. like Jesus. That's, yeah. It, one, one of the, the ways. things. Go ahead and preach. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Not one of the things. God bless you, cousin David. One of the things uh, that you said uh it, it kind of triggers something that I uh, noticed uh, in Mark, the 10th chapter, in around the 49th and 50th verse, it was blind Bartimaeus. The Bible said when he came to Jesus and Jesus called him, the Bible said he cast away his garment and rose and came to Jesus. That thing and what came to mind is that thing that you're hiding, that you're covering up. Yeah. You know, you have to expose that. See, yeah. and that's what he did when he came to Jesus. He took off that, they say, in other words, he became naked. Mm -hmm. yes, he exposed yes, himself that yes. he might receive Christ. And that's I'm going, when, I, when I got to read that, when I got to read that, I understand, see, this is the problem with a lot of people on today. They're not really to become naked. They're not really to expose yeah, themselves yeah, yeah, so yeah. that Christ could heal him. He was already yeah. blind, so it didn't matter what nobody saw, what nobody thought. He was already blind anyway. But then he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And this is how we got to be when we come to the Lord. We got to come to him all the way naked and clean. That's right. That's good. But yeah, when you said that, that, that brought, that triggered me. But they, yeah, they, I they, see. They it. That. And, yeah. Not only, and not only so, if we look at Jesus yeah. dying on the cross, they he was so willing and so loving that he let himself be exposed to the world. Mm -hmm. Sisters and brothers, sister brothers, he did. He didn't have no cover on his on his genitals. No, he, he was naked. He was mm -hmm. naked. Yeah. And 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 see, this is that's see when we really look at Jesus, and 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 I had to pray because you know when I first got saved, and and I was trying, witnessing for God on the on my school campus, my high school campus, and people got real mad at me. And it was a girl it, uh, on, on Wilma Hutchins campus. There in, here in Texas, uh, there when we walked to one class or another, there was a hill, and this girl came after me. I was walking to class, and she started screaming at me. I didn't even know her, and she was just screaming. It was just the devil because all I wanted to do was tell people about Christ. And she came running at me, and I knew she was gonna kick me. I could feel myself about to roll down that hill. <laughs> I could feel it, and and she stopped just before she got to me, and I don't know whether I would have kept on preaching if I would have been persecuted like that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but the uh-huh. Lord didn't suffer. The Lord didn't suffer, but you know, I, suffering, I mean, to be like Jesus, you got to be willing to take some stuff you know, like my brother, when he was young, he said, hit me again. I'm about to, I'm about to kill somebody. <laughs> I was about to kill that boy. If I picked up a brick and I was going to kill a boy for hitting my brother, I was going to kill him. And I felt, and that boy looked at me and he saw death in my eyes and he didn't hit him no more. You know, mm. so I'm telling you, I, I I don't have, I wasn't born with the Jesus complex. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, by the jewel didn't play, man. We saw gunfire mm. and bloodshots and, and knives all the time. My mother didn't play. So I didn't come up with that. That So I had, so, so I, I'm just playing, but yeah. You had to, you had to take his joke upon you. And learn oh, a bill. <laughs> Amen. Uh-huh. And be born again. Be born again. A new mm-hmm. creature. What he asked spirit. us, what he asked us, and that's like that's why the, the uh, when the disciples said one time, it said Jesus said, except you do you know forgive that many times, they uh, go through. I have a needle. Somebody bring that out for me. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And they said, Oh Lord, you know who then? Who then? Who can, who can do this? Who can humble themselves like that? Mm-hmm. But that's what it means to be like Jesus. And, that's and right. many times, that's what the word does. See, this is what happened. What happened. Sir so Shirley talked about the mirror. The word will uncover you. Brother Ryan was talking. The word will yes. pull off. It'll call. It'll it'll pull off all all the all the covers. It'll pull the covers back and pull all the clothes off. And a lot of times, when people get angry, that's called that's really conviction. When you when the word make you mad, that's really conviction. People don't want to call it that, but that's really what it is. And that's that's a that's the grace of God. And one one of the thing, and I'm, we gonna we, we can close it out. But one of the things she said, uh, anybody could come to Jesus. Jesus had no respect to prayer. That's one of the things the Pharisees had against him because when when she the lady came and started started uh, what wiping his feet with her hair, uh-huh. don't even know who this is touching him. Um, well, see, Christ, he was touchable. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched. Today, we have ministers that can't be touched. Come on. That means you ain't like Jesus. That's right. Jesus didn't have nobody God. God. He had people with swords around him. He walked among the people. Yeah. So, so we, we see that we see where we have to come back to Christ and let him be all in all. And this, so this is, I really enjoyed this class. Anybody else got anything to say, Sister so April? You, you take it away. I, I just, we... one thing, uh, uh, this week I have been seeing is, you know, we hear a lot of Jesus still working on me. And it's time to get to a place where you are working on you. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. all let Jesus still work. No, we have a choice to make. Mm-hmm. And everything mm-hmm. we do is a choice. You yeah. have to choose not to right. respond in that manner. That's it's right. not right. Jesus who making you do it or mm-hmm. making you not do it. It's you. Right. And so That's we're true. talking about following Jesus. You have to choose Jesus every day. You we have, have to take to a big cross. And take it, our cross every day. I choose Christ today. When you get on that job and they poking at you. I choose Christ today. What does that mean? What would Jesus do in this situation? I'm not going to go tip for tap for you. I'm not going to be in here screaming and hollering and arguing with my coworker. I'm not doing that. I choose Christ today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you did me wrong and I have the opportunity to get you back. But guess what? I choose Christ today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not I being it. vengeful. I, it, vengeance is his. I don't mm-hmm. Yep. Why you won't stand up for yourself? I choose Christ today. I'm going to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. You have to choose to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to follow him. You choose to put yourself to the side. I choose to hold my tongue. Mm -hmm. I choose to turn the other cheek. I choose to Mm -hmm. refrain from thinking like that. Mm -hmm. I choose to let bitterness go. I choose to forgive. Mm. That is what it means to follow Christ. It is to choose 
the, the Lord's will over your own. Mm -hmm. Jesus and in the garden, he made a choice. Yeah, I uh -huh. choose to go ahead to the cross. Uh -huh. It was a choice that had to be made. And this is what we at. We have to choose to die. Uh -huh. We got to choose to die. And that is, the problem is we're too alive. We have got to make a choice today to die to self, die to the flesh, die to religion. Lord, just let me start over. Forgive uh -huh. me. Holy Spirit, come in and lead me to all truth. Remove everything that's been put in me that was not like you, that mm. wasn't you, that wasn't true, that wasn't the word. All man-made religion and rules, remove it from me. And Holy Spirit begin to lead me into all truth. That is a choice we have to make. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm through. You said it. You said it. Anybody Friday else? Friday Night Live. Tune in with us every Friday night at 7 p.m. <laughs> Friday Night Live. Following Christ. Following Jesus Christ. And what does it mean? Take the time to think on that on tonight. If you say you are a follower of Christ, what does it look like? What does your following look like? Are you truly following Jesus Christ? Or is it another Jesus that you follow? And mm -hmm. what does it mean? And what do you need to do from that point? From the point that you're in. And if you are not a follower of Christ, you can choose today to be. Right where you at. Right where you stand. Right where you sit. Right now, mm -hmm. you can repent of your sins. You can ask the Lord to come in. Come into your life as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He gives it to them that ask. Mm -hmm. And you can become a follower of Christ. You can become a disciple on today. Count up the cost. Woo, that's another. You got to count up the cost. <laughs> um, sometimes we don't be to count it up the cost. We we be quick, mm -hmm. you know. We, so we just, and so much love for the Lord. When you come in, Lord, send me. Lord, I'll go, but you ain't count that up. That's you right. Got, you got to count up the cost before you start agreeing to doing oh. certain things. You need to count up the cost. Sometimes mm -hmm. we put ourselves in the positions. The Lord didn't ask you to do all that. You you did that yourself. Count up the cost. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank y'all for tuning in. Wednesday night, Discipleship 101. We will finish up the second half of Matthew chapter 12. So Discipleship 101, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Friday night live. Join us every Friday night at 7 p.m. Feel free to reach out to anyone you see on this live. Inbox us. We'll send you the link if you'd like to join. And we will see y'all on next week. Can, can, can we pray to Jesus since he's yes. here? You can, uh, you can go ahead and pray, uh, sis. All right. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much that you're here with us and that you said that you would never leave us and that you would never forsake us. We are so blessed and so honored that you, you, you are here, Father. Father, we pray that your kingdom come and we pray that your will be done. Have your way in every soul, God, that's on this line and those that will come. Oh, Father, touch the broken heart, touch, touch the breaking hearts. Lord, don't let it be, let, let anything that needs to be healed, Father, don't let it be out of the way, Father, but heal it, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Touch as only you can touch, dear Jesus. Move only as you can move, dear Jesus. We acknowledge you, we honor you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.